Hi everyone and thank you for tuning into this video. My name is Krista Bryson and I created the West Virginia Water Crisis WordPress.com blog. And I've been following this event both from my home in Columbus, um, the, the second day of the event, Friday, and over the last four days I've been in West Virginia filming on the ground people's stories about the water crisis. So I've given you a lot of information from individuals who have personal experience with the water crisis, with the chemical leak. I've given you updates from the news on my Twitter account. I've given you um, updates on the Aaron Brockovich Town Hall meeting. And what I would like to do now is give you another perspective, a historical perspective on what has been happening in West Virginia for many, many decades. So I'm just going to tell you a little story here just to give you this perspective. So in 2000 and 2001, McDowell County, West Virginia, which is in the very, very bottom part of West Virginia, the most southernmost county, had severe flooding. And the residents in that area thought, hey, you know, maybe we should check our, our water quality because of all this flooding, bringing in all of all of this um, organic matter, who knows what other kind of pollutants were brought in to our water supply. So what they found out was disturbing. They found out that nearly 76% of water in all of McDowell County was not properly treated by a wastewater plant. They found out that 50% of homes in McDowell County were receiving untreated, untreated water. That means that the sewage was being drained directly into the water supply and not being treated. People were drinking raw sewage in McDowell County. You can read about this on the internet. They have the McDowell County Wastewater Coalition. You can read all this information in their reports. People have known about this. It is 2014. This was in 2001. People have known about this for a very long time. Now, why isn't this a national story? Why aren't people doing anything about it? There are many reasons why, including apathy. I mean, it's, it's difficult to get something like this taken care of, especially in a poorer state, a state where the GDP per capita is ranked 49th, 49th, only followed by Idaho in the country. That was in 2012. So if you, if you wonder why people aren't investing money into the water systems, it's because they, they don't feel they're going to get a return on it. They don't care. We don't make them enough money. Now, when we look at this chemical spill, this accident, whatever you want to call it, it is not a accident. This has been going on for decades. Union Carbide, now Dow Chemical, has been dumping chemicals into the river for decades. I have three members of my family who worked there and told me firsthand that's what they did, that's what they were told to do. They didn't report spills, they just put it in the river to get rid of it. This was in starting in the 40s and through the 80s before stricter EPA regulations. And now clearly we don't have strict enough regulations because the last time Freedom Industries had an investigation, had, it, had, a, had anyone look at this plant from the DEP or the EPA, anyone, was 1991. And as John Stewart said, that's like six Batmans ago. So why don't we care? This is your opportunity to care. We talk about poverty. We talk about you know, bringing in jobs. Coal keeps the lights on. We talk about improving our education in West Virginia. You know, you can't have better jobs, more jobs, better education when you don't have clean water. You start with clean water and then you go up. If you don't have health and wellness, if you can't open businesses because they're closed because they can't provide water to their customers and their unsafe environments to be in, if children can't go to school because they can't drink the water or touch the water, 
you can't improve the region. You can't look at poverty, you can't look at education, nothing. You have to start here. And for activists out there, this is your chance. I know you've been fighting. I know you're out there. I know you've been fighting for decades. It's so hard to get anyone's attention on this. This is day six of the water crisis. Day five that it's really beneficial. And we've already seen people moving on in the news, the national news. And the news media here has very few reporters looking at regulations, looking at, of course, the lack of regulations, looking at how long this chemical has actually been leaking. I can tell you that last night I met a mother of a four-month-old baby. For the last two months, this child has had severe eczema. That kind of eczema where her skin is red and scaly and flaking off, the baby's head was cracked and bleeding every day. They coated the baby's head in Vaseline every day and put a little beanie on it to keep it from bleeding and cracking. This mother told me that as soon as she found out about the contaminated water, either Thursday evening or Friday morning, she found out. She started bathing her baby in non-West Virginia American water sources. She started bathing her child with bottled water. Within two days, she told me the eczema was gone. Gone. I went and talked to her after she spoke at the Aaron Brockovich Town Hall. She showed me photos on her phone of this baby. So this isn't just today. It's not just this week. This water is not good. I'm not saying the chemical has been in there for years. I don't know. We don't know what's in there. But at the very least, what the, what the water is being treated with was not safe, at least for this baby and others, I'm sure. I saw a mother yesterday who told about her daughter who drank the water, washed dishes in the water, and took a hot, hot shower in the water that was polluted before they let us know. This was after the leak happened but in that eight hour time period that they didn't let us know that the leak happened. Within hours, the daughter was violently ill, throwing up a gelatinous substance. She, her skin was like red and covered in itchy and burning, which I'm only guessing is a chemical burn. And she was having difficulty breathing as if she had severe asthma. She waited several days to go to the hospital because she thought, oh, you know, it's, it's fine, I'll just tough it out. She finally went to the hospital, where she still is now, three, four days later, because she has chemical pneumonia, pneumonia or pneumonitis. It's officially pneumonitis. I'm not really sure how to pronounce that. But her lungs are irritated from this, and this can be a chronic or long-term condition that she has forever. And these stories, you're not hearing them in the news. Where are they? They're not telling that story. The footage that WCHS took, that's the local news station, Channel 8 and 11, took of the Aaron Brockovich Town Hall somehow just isn't, isn't available for public viewing. After they live streamed it, they said there was a problem with the footage. And I want to know what happened to that footage. I want to know why these stories aren't being told, why they're telling you the water is now healthy. Well, guess what? Cincinnati just closed their intake valves. So it's not just us. It's not just West Virginia. This water is coming down the Ohio River. And if you want to do something about it, this is how you're going to get people's attention. If you want to look at these long-term systemic problems in West Virginia, this is your chance. You're not going to get another chance, I hope like this. So please, organize yourselves. We talked to Erin Brockovich yesterday about this. She said the best way to get something done is to organize yourselves. Go to City Hall. Go to your state legislature. Organize. Bring everyone you can to this meeting and get your public officials' attention. Thank you and more updates to come on my blog.